Hello and welcome to the More Hammer podcast. We are without Luke this week, which means myself and Sai have been left in charge. God help us all. Um, we think Luke claims to be ill, but we think he's skiving and watching the football. So yeah, if you're just watching the match... On. Yeah, if you like spot him in the crowd or something, then we know he's actually slunk off to Germany to go watch it. Uh, <laughs> but first, let's do a little bit of quick housekeeping. Uh, hello and welcome to the Warhammer Podcast. Thank you for joining us here either on YouTube or on Spotify. If you regularly catch us every week on YouTube, don't forget you can also catch us over on Spotify. If, on the other hand, you are listening to this on Spotify, don't forget you can also watch the action over on YouTube. And, of course, we have the Warhammer Discord as well, where you can come and join in the conversation. Uh, because it is just myself and Sai this week, there's going to be a few of our kind of semi-regular features that are going to be missing. There's going to be no community questions this week. And as well, instead of playing Warhammer 20 questions, we get a brief respite from the barrage of difficult questions that have been coming there. We're going to play a game of how much? So, without further ado, let's dive straight in. First of all, let's kind of just catch up with some hobby roundup. Sai, what have you been doing in the hobby this last couple of weeks? Uh, not too much in terms of building stuff. I did actually, um, in bl true Blue Peter fashion for anyone who's watching on YouTube, here's one I prepared earlier. Uh, cue Jurassic Park theme music right now. It's the um, the crane from Necromunda with the grabby claw on. That's cool. Um, that's going to get painted up this weekend, hopefully, especially as soon as the weather is quite nice. Uh, but the other thing I've been doing um, is getting some old copies of White Dwarf, um, ready to do some more retro read-throughs. I've got White Dwarf 174, which Nick Burton said um, last week this was his first ever White Dwarf. So I mentioned on Twitter that I'd make that my next episode for retro read through so i'm going to be going through that there'll be a video uh, of that going up very soon and it's just a good excuse to thumb through an old white dwarf from the early 90s so any excuse to do that i will take it um in terms of uh, yeah in terms of gaming i haven't actually played any games this week uh, nor done any painting i'm afraid to say i've just been building and adding to my ever increasing tide of gray plastic so there's an excellent battle report in that issue of white dwarf uh it was the uh revenge of the doom lord which is it was originally published as a scenario in the fourth edition undead army book but then they it play it doom, through the in doom that white dwarf lord, right. i I'm, I'm good on my classic battle reports plus it's an undead one and i love me some one fancy undead but yeah that is a great i got to i can't wait to watch your retro read through on that because that is a great issue to dive back into what was the other one I'll you make sure it's, um, the camera's set so you can see every, all the text on the pages yeah what was the other issue that you had hiding at the back there? I've got um, I've got White Dwarf 174. I've got 169, which was the uh, Space Ooh, Wolf Codex. Space issue. Wolf, for goodness. Sadly, no card battle bunker in there, which is a shame. Um, I was hoping it would come with that. And I've also <laughs> got, as well, I've got, on this side, I've got White Dwarf 177 Ooh. and 189 as well. Oh, you're delving into some absolute classic here. It's not the, the it's not the golden era that is the fat dwarf era. This is what I tend to think of as the silver age, which is I know. It, yeah, there we are. that's fat dwarf era. Yeah, Big two or four and two or five there as well. They're on yeah. the pile to do for um, retro read through. And I also want to do uh, one eight two to one eight five, which was the um, focus on the Imperial Guard regiment. So from the Cadians mm -hmm. through to Katachan Valhalla. So I'm going to do all those as well. I think. That sounds excellent. I always think of those white doors. I know in comics you refer to the first one as the Golden Age, which was like the JSA and stuff like that. And then Silver Age was Superman and Batman. In White Dwarfs, I think of it in reverse because the issues that you were holding up originally had the chrome silvered White Dwarf logo. Whereas when they shifted to Paul Sawyer as editor and the Fat Dwarf issue, they had the golden chromed White Dwarf logo. So yeah, that's, that's how I tend to divine them. Golden yeah, Age, I'm just Silver looking Age. at 174 here. Yeah, and that has the chrome, like bluey yeah, silver. The silver and chrome one. And then 177 is when it changed to... Uh, I don't know if it's that one where it changed to gold, but it's... Yeah, you're right You're right there. It did change to gold, mm. and it did get superb after that. Right in the middle of second edition 40k, Necromunda came out, Titan Legions came out as well. It mm -hmm. was good times. Very, very good times. We could easily just spend the entire video reminiscing about that. I was just going to say, I think we need to... Next time Luke's off, I think we should do that. We should have a... We should. A, a, a white dwarf, uh, retro white dwarf flavoured Mohammer podcast. I am with you on that. We could do like our favourite 10 issues or something and just wax like lyrical on the subject of what was so good about them for all the grogs nods what, out there. What have you been doing hobby-wise then, Ben? 
Uh, I've been quite, so Warcry is a big thing in my head at the moment. Um, I it's one of those things that I'd always meant to kind of try it, and I dabbled with it a little bit. I'd gotten the Vampires versus the Stormcast starter box to kind of yeah. try my hand at it, and I played with it a little bit, kind of just playing at home alone. Um, you know, kind of, kind of get my head around the rules. I'd read the rule books, kind of cover to cover, and I'd never quite got my head around it until I played it. So I, I played a game last week against my friends, and it was awesome. I mean, it was really seriously. I I, I think I'm. I was commenting to one of my friends uh, when we were talking hobby stuff. I love, like, you know, Necromunda. I love Blood Bowl. But I think Warcry may be the best small game rule set that they have really? produced. It's really good. I, I've, I've never played it. Um, I, I would like to like to give it a try, especially if, you know, the rumors are true and it might be heading on the way. I, I don't think it is, you know, to be honest. <laughs> I really don't. I, I hope it's not. I mean, they just released a whole box set for it, like, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. So, um... Against the, the um, Indian, what are they called? The... Well, anyway, Age of Sigmar Elves. Was it? Uh, no, it was, it was the Night Haunt versus Age of Sigmar Elves. I can't remember what flavor. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was. it was. Yeah, of course it was. I was thinking of the one with the dog that they previewed, you know, with the born dog. Oh, yeah. See, that one hasn't even come out yet. So, no. yeah, I, I can't see Warcry going anywhere. No, I don't think so. Not, not for any first foreseeable time, at least. Well, so I spent some time painting a Warcry warband. I painted some Dark Elf Savages. And then we played some games, and that was a lot of fun. And then I came away going, oh, this is brilliant. I want to play loads more at Warcry. And I was originally <laughs> playing around with the Warcry uh, kind of army building app on the Warhammer community website. And then someone pointed out to me that actually, unfortunately, it's out of date. The points values and stuff on it are completely incorrect. Luckily, there is a, as always in the hobby, there is a fan-based site that came to my rescue, which is Warcryer. Quick shout out to them. Uh, so I have spent the last kind of, Three or four days just playing around with army lists and, and d diving into kind of my bits box and going, what else can I use to make little Excellent. kind of thousand point war by war bands? So I've got a um, soul blight graveyard, a grave lords, which I was working on some models for that for fourth edition Age of Sigmar anyway. But that seemed like an ideal opportunity to go, let's do that, you know, but paint up some more to make a thousand point war cry war band. And then I kind of went, I need something to, to, to battle against them. What if I got in my bits box that I could use to kind of make a really cool war cry war band? And I had from one of the Stormbringer magazines, the oh war, yeah, the Sylvaneth Warhammer Underworlds war band that they did, the little four Iltharial's Il Guardians. The oh Sylvaneth yeah, that, wasn't that quite a recent issue? About it was, seven yeah. Seven or eight weeks ago, yeah, yeah. I had it they're just sat waiting to be built. And I'm like, ooh, those are cool, and they hate death. They hate, you know, they are absolutely the antithesis of death. It's Let's see if I can do though. something for Warcry for that. So I spent, you know, over the weekend building them, got the spray undercoated. They're ready to get some contrast colors on them. And my hope is to have a couple of thousand point warbands, uh, death and life appropriately, and maybe film uh, like a Warcry battle report video with them, which just to kind of show how much I like Warcry and share my enthusiasm. Uh, yeah, so that that's kind of our hobby updates for this uh, this week, well, this fortnight. Um, and we'll have to catch up with Luke next time he is back from Skyving to find out what he's been up to. Uh, but that, now... I was going to say, in that case, then, if we've done hobby updates, we can't miss this. What time is it, Ben? I was going to hit this on the head. Sai, what time is it? And now the news. <laughs> I can't quite do it as good as you. <laughs> That's going to completely blow Luke's mind, though. Uh, the news, yes, let's dive into this. So, first and foremost, I think the, the one that you and I are probably most excited to share in this regard, uh, and we've got to kind of hit this up. This came up just today on the Warhammer community site, and it is glorious. Let me quickly share this onto here. Are you referring to something hideously evil deep in the dark? Something yeah. hideously evil, yet truly wonderful. I am talking, of course, about this dude. Here Don't you open that, Hive Secundus. Oh, that's so cool! Yeah. yeah. So the, this the is the... The Alpha, for anyone who's uh, listening on Spotify, this has just been revealed today um, as one of the big gnarly bads for the Malstrain in Hive Secundus and Necromunda. Yeah, what, what did what was it you dubbed him on the Morehammer Discord? Uh, is the uh, the Thanos of um, <laughs> well, no, I said he was inevitable, didn't I? It's you the did, Thanos yes. of Bean Stealers because it looks like he's got a giant Infinity Gauntlet on his one of his left arms. It does. I mean, down to the point where those knuckles feel like they should be painted in different colours. I mean, just that's got... what I mean. If it wasn't for those like nodules on, for yeah. want of a better word, on his knuckles, you could they just look like Infinity Stones. I'm sure that was a sly nod from whoever designed it. I love part of it. So reading through the background on this guy, it's the idea that this is the step below the patriarch. So this isn't like the overall ruling gene stealer of the cult. Yeah, the, this the is one step down. Even worse than this, lurking in the depths, is it's awesome. 
I think it's a cool idea, though. It's something that they've not had in kind of Gene Stealer cult armies until now. The idea of having a Gene Stealer that's kind of the uber Gene Stealer, but it's not the one responsible, the first Gene Stealer that started the infection and spread the cult. Uh, I think that's a really cool idea. And I hope that perhaps they get some rules for this. You know, maybe maybe an issue of White Dwarf, they'll do some rules for a, a, a Gene Stealer Alpha for the, uh, the Gene Stealer cult. That would be really cool. Indeed, yeah. I mean, they're looking at it as well, some of the details between the carapace plates on his back. You know, you can see like the exposed flesh. I think if you, a couple of different paint jobs, I think would really bring out the detail on this. I was looking at it. And if you look carefully under his his arms, it looks like he's got a tail that comes underneath with like a barbed hook or a stinger underneath. Yeah, something coming out uh, the back. Yeah, and, he, and his big left arm with the Thanos fist has actually got a tiny little arm coming off it from the looks of things as well at the elbow joint. I really like, I say the, the way they've done the eyes, the eyes, the, the, that, that it's almost like a little kind of skull with little bug eyes inside. That's really dead cool. and black. Yeah. And I like the bit of law where they said it can, um, due to its biology, it can squish itself down and ooze through gaps that it shouldn't be able to fit through as well. Yeah. I, I kind of assume that's what they were going for with the giant fist was like, it could grow or shrink its proportions to match its environment. It literally, you know, is a purely adaptive organism. So it's yeah. like at some point it must have gone, you know what I need? I need to grow a giant fist so I can punch some spiras to death. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, and the fact that this is like a priority target for the spiras as well is pretty cool. And they're yeah. going to show off something else on uh, next Monday or they call it, they call it Necromunday, they call it. Necromunday! And it's yeah, really back, cool to see that, that again. See them coming back to that but yeah more dramatis personae they spe specified which makes me wonder yeah so i wonder is it going to be something else uh malstrain because we've had two mm -hmm. now haven't we we, we had the had... um big blob of pizza door last yes. week um and then which this... is kind of kind of like the magus i suppose it's kind of the psychic version for the for the army and this then is kind of the the, the next run down from the patriarch because and actually it's interesting as well this isn't something you can just take automatically in your army it's not like a, a usual warband leader it's something that you have to much like a special character in any of the other necromunda warbands you have to petition to kind of lure him down to assist your your cult uh and presumably you have to pay some kind of maintenance cred to keep him around you know to demonstrate that the danger uh, is still there and he's still needed yeah i'm all right in thinking they did a little rules preview as well where they said that in order to charge it you first got to pass a willpower test yes and if you fail you go in to say massive storms just to charge it <laughs> yeah but no, it, it literally said it's not only it's a, it's a, like a fear test it's here we are it's madness of oh, yeah. malstrain if you fail you get the insane condition it's literally like something kind of call of cthulhu-esque you know <laughs> test for insanity and if you fail then you just lose your mind it's really very cool that is cool yeah when i read that earlier i hadn't actually noticed the insane bit at the end um, I'd only glossed over it. I, I noticed the willpower test, but I didn't spot that at the end. So that's even better. Uh, we should move on from this because as awesome as it is, there's Indeed. loads to cover. Uh, next one up. Let me just get it up on the screen. Yeah, something that covers no surprise to anybody, but Skaventide is up for pre-order for the kind of two-week pre-order window. Yeah, let's go on next Sunday, uh, next Saturday. It's going up for pre-order in two weeks, like you say. So that'll be what the... 13th of July, is that when it'll be out? That's the, that's the release date, yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the things I was quite surprised by with this, which was they all of the kind of the Warhammer influencer community were sharing pictures of this over the weekend, talking about, you know, the rules. There's been some rules retrospective videos already kind of making appearances online. I therefore got really excited and went into my local store expecting that there'd be a copy there, a physical copy that I could see, you know, rub my yeah. grubby little mitts over the miniatures and stuff. It would turns out that the, the the influencers have actually gotten to preview, preview this before any of the stores that the stores weren't even allowed to open their boxes until Monday today uh, to oh, kind of start painting them, which I, I don't know if that's the the greatest decision because I feel like the stores should be the flagship for, for presenting this stuff more than anything. You know, your local hobby store should be something that people should be wanting to go into and kind of see this stuff rather than resorting to Instagram and Twitter and stuff and YouTube. To get their their fix of Skaven Tide. Yeah, you would think the embargo would just be one week before the release date for the um, the online people for the influencers. That's how it used to be, but then mm. obviously that was when we were on one week pre orders, wasn't it? This um, is true. So I don't know if whether like the embargo is ten o'clock on a Saturday morning, and then they can publish all their videos. But by that point, if you're watching an unboxing video at ten o'clock on a Saturday morning, by the time you've watched that video, 
you can guarantee it's probably going to be sold out. Yeah, uh, that's it. So perhaps they want a week of you salivating over these unboxing videos and watching people put the miniatures together and paint them. Um, I've watched a few unboxing videos and I was saying to you earlier this week, as much as I've been excited about this box, I've been trying to sit down and think about it sensibly and think, do I really, really want another box on the <laughs> shelf full of grey plastic that I'm not going to finish? Because the Indomitus box is just that shot on the floor, full of the Necrons, uh, not been touched. The Dark Imperium box, I got, I did get rid of the Plague Marines, but I still got the Marines from that, not touched. Um, and then Dominion as well. I mean, <laughs> I've not even painted the Stormcast from that. So I have to be quite sensible about this, especially because I am absolutely getting Necromunda Secundus. <laughs> I do like the Skaven more than the Stormcast. So I think I might just wait and just get the Skaven when it comes out separately. But, but having just made that decision on Friday last week, I then went and watched a lot of unboxing videos on Saturday. Yeah. And I was like, ooh, these look really good. Maybe I will have the box. Can I wait? My problem is I can't wait for anything. I have to have it straight away. I have to get mm -hmm. my greedy little mitts on it straight away. So I'm torn. I, I don't know what to do. I think I would automatically be getting the Necromunda Secundus box if it contained Spiras and the Malstrains. The fact that it's the Malstrains and kind of the Vansar Tech Hunters allowed me to kind of cool myself. I like, go, oh, it's cool. I can get the Malstrains later. I don't need don't, them. Don't you now. get the two Aura Spiras in the box though as well? Do you? I thought they were separate. I thought it was just the tech. Uh, we'll have to check. I, I thought, thought the Aura Spiras came in the box, um, but the remaining Spiras were the ones that were, uh, are going to come separately. Um, I might be Let's wrong, take actually. A look. Let's take a quick look. Necromunda be annoyed if that's the case. Um, Secundus box. This is, this is where we can just go off tangent and look at what we want because Luke's not here. Yeah, he's not here to keep us under control. Here we are. That's the terrain. Let's see if that gives us... That's the link to the terrain. Let's see if that's oh, the the preview. One. Yeah, let's have a look. Uh, let's see. Bottom one, I think it is. There we go. There we go. Find out more. I, I do wish to find out more. I want to know what you get in the box. Yeah, we want to know what you get in the box. Show us the goodies. So if you look so at that it picture, it does show spiders on the cover, doesn't it? So what's in that? Are the spiders on that picture there? There are, you're right, the Aurus are in there. So it's two oh, Aurus and the Vansar Tech Gang. That is tempting. I don't I still you I do, don't want to. You tech get a gang. fair wadge of plastic in the box then because you get the Vansar Tech Hunters, that's ten miniatures, six mile yeah. strains, you get your, your beach ball and two auras, ribbons, two spirals and some bulkheads. And, and some bulkheads and the evil flying um baby what is it, the character? Yes, the look the character. You're right, you do get a lot of stuff in the box. Well, you made me doubt myself. I wasn't sure, but yeah. So I, I'm 100% getting this box, so I can't get this and um, Skaven Tide, I don't think. Not without getting divorced. <laughs> well, I'm only kidding. We, she, she would let me. She's not bothered at all, but I do need to be sensible. Well, um, before we move on from Skaven Tide, I mentioned about how uh, so, you know local stores being allowed to kind of promote it and so forth. I've got a little something, a surprise for you. This is from a, a store in Mexico City promoting the uh, Skaven Tide release. I came across this just a little bit before we came on, and it was too awesome not to share with you. <laughs> I just, I, is right, that okay. not I, the best thing ever? That is the greatest Warhammer poster I have ever seen in <laughs> my entire life. For anyone listening, I'm going to try and break this down for you. <laughs> So I'll start from the bottom. It says, posted in Reddit slash Age of Sigma. So if you go looking on the You'll Age of Sigma that. Reddit, you might actually find this poster. It is what can only be described as a orange and bronze Stormcast slash Mexican wrestler. <laughs> in a Luchador star Stormcast. Yeah, wearing a cape covered in stars. Uh, With bare muscled arms. E Stormcast versus Las More Moreros Rata, is that? For anyone who's aspiring to by that, I apologise if I've just butchered that. It is two <laughs> <laughs> two female rats, I would say that are um, very female. Very female, yeah. They're uh, a bit, little bit top heavy, and they look <laughs> a bit, bit like Cher. I would say. <laughs> I, guess, I, I have no words. That is the best poster I've ever seen. Go and look no. on Reddit 
forward slash Age of Sigma. See if you can find this poster. And if you're on the Mohammed Discord, Ben will post it up. And uh, well, I'm going to post this. Let us know what your thoughts are. I'm going to post this to Luke's wall because I think this belongs on Luke's this wall. This needs to be on Luke's wall, 100%. <laughs> it has to be done. I will even print it for him at work on our big poster printer. I'll get the marketing department to print it. It will create a lot of questions, but I'll get it. <laughs> oh. That is fantastic. Yeah, I, I came literally like 20 minutes before we came on. I came across that. I was like, no, no, I have to share that now. It is too awesome <laughs> not to share. Uh, there is one final, before we move on, there is one final news item that we need to deal with. This is something we've been banging on about on the podcast for ages, and it's glorious to see it now coming up. Here it is. So this is from a leak from the 4th edition Age of Sigma book. Here we go. Uh, so I think you've got the text for this. Do you want to read it out? For I have indeed, like, yeah. So the, there, there is an image from the 4th edition rulebook, um, and it's written in like a, a letter that's been sent from some, some scout to uh, um, one of his friends or whatever, mm -hmm. and there's a symbol on there, and it is a hash-up symbol. It's... What a metal dwarven face a with like a chain beard. skull with horns. Yeah, the, the mouth is like a furnace, there's two horns, yeah. and it says, Cole, I know what everyone's saying. Listen to what I'm saying now. I've ranged as close to the chain as any may dare, and I'm telling you that it isn't just rat men lurking there. Most of the land's been smashed flat, and the hammering you hear from the mountains is too methodical for the skaven. There are oil slicks that melt flesh right off your bones, and smoke that calls in the sky like screaming faces. Please believe me. Inform the marshals. Something is coming, and I don't know if we're ready for it. Stay cautious, Jazra. Basically, yes. more evidence that the armies of Hashut are coming. Chaos Dwarves are coming to Age of Sigma. I am 100% convinced of that now. It's going to be coming in a big way. I think we've kind of just seen little little essences of it being added in we got things like we got the 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 warrior the human cultists of a of a shut we got the hobgots grot slitters we got all these kind of little precursor waves coming what i'm assuming it's like just the, the front edge of the tide that's going to come pouring over the chain in just this destructive mass of iron and fire it's going to be awesome yeah and and if the if these miniatures are going to be anything like what we've seen for age of sigma you know, previously, because you got to admit, some of the Sigma minis are probably the best in the the Warhammer range, the way they're designed. And we've had, like you say, we've had the hints, haven't we? We've had Warcry Warbands with Chaos Dwarves in, or Hashut, um Horns humans. of Hashut, yeah. Yeah, Horns of Hashut, so the humans that, even the quote of text that said they range far ahead of the advancing Hashut armies. And then we've had, um, like you we said, the Hobgot, the Hobgot's trading with the Chaos Dwarves to get weapons. Mm -hmm. And then recently, I think um, after we'd done our Mohammer podcast about the Chaos Dwarves coming back, there was a, a map posted recently, wasn't there, for Age of Sigma? There was. And it showed, a, was it a port of Hashut or something like that, or a city of Hashut down in the bottom right on this map? I think uh, Pointy Paints did a video, didn't he, about it? He did. So, yeah, all the, the little clues have been drip-fed. And it's just it like was... they did with the Vortan in 40k. They were leaving hints here and there, and then all of a sudden they arrived, so... Yeah, I think you're right, Ben. They are definitely coming in a tide of iron and fire. Yeah, and I love the description as well. Things like, you know, the, the sorceress element to it. You know, oil slicks that melt the flesh off your bones or screaming clouds of smoke. It really kind yeah, of captures... Yeah, methodical hammering and stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. brilliant. Very, very exciting. Looking forward to that. Um, okay, well, let's move on from this. So there was kind of... Um, Another topic. Since Luke's not here to stop us, Sai and I have got a pet topic that we thought we'd indulge ourselves with for 15 minutes or so. So, Sai, why don't you tell us what we're going to be talking about? So one of the things we thought we'd talk about, while, like Ben says, while Luke's not here and we can get away with it, is our favourite Imperial Guard or Astra Militarum regiments, what would we like to see come back to either Kill Team or 40k and what could they bring in terms of flavor to the game? What you know, are they just going to come back for nostalgia's sake and they look good, but they're just regular Imperial Guardsmen? Mm -hmm. Or could each one have a flavor and have a theme and bring something different? So, Ben, why don't you go first? And uh, what, what do you think? What's your thoughts on this? What would I like? Well, what would I think? What would I like to see? I mean, we've seen they did the Death Corps, we've actually seen suggestions that the Death Corps are going to get reinforcements once the Guard Codex lands. Uh, yeah, that, absolutely, that, I think they are. There's going to be perhaps whether an entirely new kit or maybe some kind of conversion kit that will create proper Death Riders out of the kind of the Rough Riders kit. Um, 
I would love to see them do some of the other regiments as well, because I know Death Corps of Krieg have a lot of you know fond memories for a lot of people who perhaps couldn't afford the Forge World models of them, and it's really nice that you can now get the plastic kits of them. But it does seem like the ideal opportunity to just crank out a whole bunch of different plastic regiments, whether, like you say, it is as a kill team box set for each one. You're going, hey, you know, here's a Talon kill team, here's a Valhallen kill team, or whether it is just to, to release them. I mean, Canachans, Canachans need a new box. They are perhaps yeah, I mean, one of the most outdated plastics still in the we world. We mention it every podcast, don't we? we please bring them back. But yeah, we were, what we were pondering was if you were to release them, because at the moment, Cadians have got their kind of unique way that they appear in the Guard Codex. You've got the top choice of two special weapons for a Cadian kind of box set. Um, Death uh, Core of Krieg have likewise got the whole kind of variety of extra little bits of kit that you can add into one of their regiments. What could each of the other regiments have? And what would I like to see them have that would make them distinct, unique parts of the Guard Codex? I mean, Catachans at the moment, they've obviously got kind of you know, access to flamers and heavy flamers and stuff. So they've, yeah. they've got that kind of jungle warfare, flamethrower clearance approach. So this was my thoughts as well. Like going off the law snippets that we've had in the, the older articles, um, and you know, and each regiment flavored to that uh, aspect, if you like. But yeah, go on, continue. So Catachans and flamers. Mordians and bayonet drill. I would like to see Mordians where they all all of them have got the options of you know fix bayonets and you've got their the, you know, the dress uniforms pressed neatly pressed and you can arrange them in such a way that they if they're all you know in like base contact or something that they get bonuses to their you know to hit in combat or something or they get bonuses to their attacks or or enemies are at minus one to hit them or something that represents that neatly drilled yeah. regimented approach I'd, I'd love just because uh, i think it's something that's a little bit lacking in the guard range at the moment you know they've got the guns they've got the modern warfare rifles but they're missing that kind of slightly almost historical war gaming aspect that was a big part of kind of the imperial guard so more yeah, than that's i'd love to see yeah, I agree completely. I mean, like you say, with the Catachans, with the, the close combat and the flamers and stuff like that, Morians is a great point with fixed bayonets and the, like the, the ranks of troopers hold the line or something you could have. Like the they mentioned in the, the law, the Valhans are notoriously stoic, aren't they, and stubborn and won't give up. So they could have something where they've got bonuses to uh, pass in, you know, morale checks and stuff like that. They won't flee. And then you could have stuff like the Talan, uh, guerrilla experts aren't they so you could have sorts, sorts of deployment experts for talan and they're meant to be some of the best tank crews in the imperial guard yeah so you'd give them bonuses for like i don't know a plus one to hit for any talan tanks or something along those lines doesn't have to be that so yeah like you say something that would make each regiment unique and bring a little bit extra i mean steel legion as well i think i can't remember what the original rules were now for steel legion but I think they got bonuses for being a mechanized force, didn't they? They did. The Steel Legion, when they were originally released in the uh, Codex Armageddon, the entire right. army was a mechanized force. It was the first time where you could take armored fist squads, but it wasn't just armored fist squads, they were armored fist platoons. So you took, yeah. you know, two or three infantry squads, each squad mounted in the Chimera, and then you mounted the command section in the Chimera as well. You had entire mechanized infantry armies, which was really cool. Um, what I was going to say for the Valhallans, of course, the other thing they're famous for is that whole kind of sending wave after wave of men at the enemy. Uh, they, in fact, used to have a special character who got rules where, you know, units got more models kind of added back in as he just dispatched wave after wave of men at the foe. I think you could have, because there is mechanics for that in things like Age of Sigmar and kind of 40k and stuff at the moment. Maybe you could give them that kind of, okay, at the end of a round d3 of them get back up or something as he adds more men into the fray maybe yeah, they can come like in kings bring them back sort of thing yeah or like yeah. the necrons kind of we'll be back roll but also bigger units like 20 man units of Valhallans, whereas everybody else is in little 10 man infantry blobs imagine if they could go toe to as they should go toe to toe with the orcs and you could have you know, okay you have to buy two boxes of Valhallans, or they just go in a bigger box that has 20 models yeah there but 20 Val man Valhallen units that are just mass infantry blocks that you just throw in, you know, as, uh, at the foe. And there's always more where they came from. I think that would be really cool for Valhallens. Yeah, that would be good. It'd be also good if, like, if each particular type of regiment got a special weapon for free. So, like, Castellans yeah. get a free flamer. Um, sniper Valhallen. rifles for Talon. Talon used to have the specialist sniper rifle teams yeah. from Forge World. Yeah, and then you could have maybe uh, Valhallens could have the free mortar. Yeah, just like shelling kind of a, people. A free last cannon or something like that. But yeah, not a last cannon, sorry. Um, 
I don't know, like a grenade launcher. Or grenade launcher, like yeah, that. like an anti, you know, anti personnel kind of weapon or something to break up the enemy ranks. But yeah, um, and if you were to come back for kill team as well, they could do what they did with the Death Corps of Krieg. So they can bring back a box where mm -hmm. you can make ten guardsmen, but with enough bits in to make all sorts of different special weapon types. Yeah. So that I mean, it it'd sell like hotcakes. We I've gone on about this many times. We'd buy them. If I didn't. We'd buy them. Well, we'd buy them for a start. Yeah, Ripper Jackson, though, and the um, Carl Wells oh, Colonel. Yeah. They were, they were two absolutely incredible plastic miniatures. So we know that they can make good Katachan plastics. We know that the Death Corps of Krieg are nice. The new Cadians are really nice as well. You've got the field um, batteries. You've got the yeah, heavy the weapons. Pieces. All they need to do is make new crew or mm. just new heads. Well, that's it. You just, if you've got, I mean, to be honest, if you had a Talon box and you could just take the heads, some spare heads from the Talon box and mount them on the infantry from the, like the heavy weapons kits or the, um, the, the mortars and the, the, the big artillery pieces, to be honest, a lot of the, the, the Talon um, distinctiveness was just kind of the head scarves. Uh, likewise, the Valhallans. Yes, okay, they had the long great coats, but there's yeah, a lot of the crossover coats, there yeah. between like that and the Steel Legion, and also between that and what the the Death Corps wear. Just give us I mean, if, if if we can't have whole box, at least give us heads, but preferably give us whole boxes and rules for using all the different regiments because that would just be really cool. Uh, yeah, Tanith, bring back, should probably bring back the well. guard. Bring back um, the guard with a vengeance. I, I was looking at um, converting some like Talon and stuff like that. And there's all sorts of different things you can do. You can get green stuff and twist it around the head to create you a can. shag. Do you see what Peachy did with masking tape? No, what did he do? Well, he was making um, renowned regiments of the Imperial Guard. He made Tanith cloaks with okay. masking tape. And when I first started watching the video, I thought, there's no way this is ever going to work. But watch it. He actually did it. It was when he was part of the painting phase. And then once okay. he'd spread this masking tape cloak, it actually hardened up. And you could actually light it with PVA glue as well, apparently. It watered down, and that will harden it. And then he got strips of masking tape, um, shaved the brim off one of the Cadian helmets. Yeah. So it was just like flat front. And then he, as, as he was wrapping the masking tape around the head, he was twisting it to create like a shimag, and then oh. under the chin as well. And then once it was sprayed and painted, it actually looked brilliant. I mean, well, I'm, that's I'm, awesome. I'm, yeah, I'm not going to do that myself with masking tape. Um, I just don't have the patience to do that. But when I was watching it, I was like, there is absolutely no way this is going to work. But it, it does. So, you, I mean, there are ways to convert the new KD kits. <laughs> like that, but like you said, <clears throat> some of them are a little bit too different. The Valhall and Great Courts are iconic, aren't they? Steel Legion rebreathers and stuff like that. And the fuzzy hats. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. I mean, there are there are companies out there that do kind of third party heads and stuff. So you can there are plenty of places that you can get different head swaps if you want to get them. I've got a box of because uh, I've got a Praetorian army. I've got two guard armies. My um, kind of mix of Catachan and Cadian bits, old metal army that is my Kelly's Heroes army, and then I've got uh, my Praetorian Imperial Guard that's the original kind of metal ones. And there was a company for a while that was producing Ogrin heads, but they had pith helmets on. <laughs> so I've got a low. I've got like six Ogryn heads, all wearing pith helmets, and I just need to at some point buy a couple of boxes of Bulgrins to have a great big armored unit of. You know, I want to do them with. Um, there was a traditional Victorian regiment called the Diehards that instead of having um, beige or you know light tan pith helmets, they had them in dark blue. And I love the idea yeah. of doing them in dark blue with big riot shields and batons, walking into the fray, going oi 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 oi. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean. I, I do hope that Games Workshop at some point are going to bring back some of these regiments and not annoy us by bringing out like Necromundan spiders and the Savlar Savla, Savla chem dogs and stuff like that. You say that if they release the I mean, new regiments spiders, would be cool. Don't we get would me wrong. buy them. Do we would yeah. buy them though? I mean, you, you see some of these regiments mentioned in the um, the previous guard course at Codex. It's like you got the Brimlock dragoons and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, but yeah. Please give us the original ones first, then you can go nuts with whatever you want. But also Living. give us some rules for them. Give them something that makes them distinctive. Yeah. I mean, I've got a guard. I've got the Kadia stands box. Um, I've got some tanks. I've got a Sentinel. I've got a Valkyrie. But everything's built vehicle and weapon-wise, as in field batteries and Sentinel. But none of the troopers are built yet, because I am waiting for that hallowed moment when they finally come. Because I don't want a Kadian army. I want something different.
Yeah. Or I want a mixed army like you used to be able to do. It's hilarious watching uh, Valhalla Nice Warriors and Talon Desert Raiders assault the same objective. So, yeah, it's moderate weather on this planet, so you're both okay. <laughs> well, that's it. And you can kind of do that now. You, you can, can kind of do, do that now, yeah. And you can do Cadians, and you can do, you know, um, the, the uh, Attilan Rough Riders. So there is a little bit of a scope. They just need to widen the scope a bit and bring in some of those other classical regiments as well. Mm, indeed. But yeah, Kill Team, like you said, would have been an ideal avenue and could still be. So if you're listening mm. to shop, just make it happen. That's just, you know, maybe like once a quarter, one of the Kill Teams is a guard regiment. That would be really simple. And I, I've got to be honest, I, I'd snap them up. Yeah, same. So. Um, right well okay let us know in the comments which regiments you'd like to see or you know anything in particular you think would make a particular regiment distinctive or unique uh, and whether or not you'd like to see games workshop do any kind of more esoteric regiments perhaps that we haven't mentioned like the hurricane dragoons or something like that um but i think it's time now for that uh game that doesn't get played that often but ought to get played more it's time for how much how much so, for anyone who's not seen us, I know we don't do it that often. It tends to come up more when we want to break from the 20 questions or if, uh, you know, it's just the two of us on the loose. The premise behind this game is both myself and Sai have gone on to eBay browsing the more esoteric buy it now options that are available for Warhammer products of the SD year. We've selected two each and we're going to put them up one at a time. And the other person has to try and guess how much it is selling for a buy it now price. Whichever of us gets closest to that buy it now price wins the round. And in theory, the options are, you know, we might win one each or it might be, you know, one complete wipeout. One of us beats the other. Play along at home. So, you know, when you take a look, no cheating, no going immediately to eBay to go and see how much these things cost. See if you can guess how you know much these things cost and let us know in the comments below how close you got. Uh, Sai, I think I've got yours loaded up first. So if I bring that up onto the screen. Yeah, so for, for anyone listening while well, Ben's just doing that, one of the way this game came about is when we were talking about uh, initial ideas for the podcast when we were first putting it together, talking about what features we could include and stuff like that. I happened to be on eBay at the time as we were discussing it on Discord. Uh, looking at things like Man of War, sealed copies of Man of War and things like that. And that's what sort of gave us the idea. So Ben's just brought the first one up on the screen now. Yep. And it's one that I'd found. Um, rather uh, fitting, it is <laughs> a <laughs> box of second edition metal Talan Desert Raiders. So it's got the box. The box has been opened and the miniatures have been assembled. And it looks like they've been primed white as well. Uh, but from the looks of things, everything is there. So you've got your sergeants, you've got your special weapons trooper, you got your guardsman, and then it's uh, I believe it's an auto gun that come, came with yeah, the Yeah, it's an auto cannon. Yeah, auto cannon. Sorry, yeah. So everything is there. It's like I say, it's got the box, it's got the polystyrene insert to the box as well, um, and it's on a buy it now price on eBay. So this is Ben's first one that he's got, I guess. Mm. The box does look slightly battered. I mean, they're not mint in box. It's not like these have not been assembled. They've at the very least been glued onto their bases and spray undercoated. Um, yeah, and just... the bases, to me, look too big as well. They don't look like the um, original bases. They look like 28 they... mil bases. Yeah, so they do look like they're slaughter bases, at least. But yeah, they do look slightly off now that you mention it. Um, but that could just be the perspective for the photo. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you look at the picture of the box, um, I don't know if you could zoom in on the actual picture of the yeah, box. Yeah, like... it might give you an, an indication of whether the bases are a different size to what the the troopers are. Uh, no, I think those bases are the right size bases. Actually, those oh yeah, no, they are. Sorry, it's, it's the, the, the perspective we're looking at. Yeah, uh, so they are on the correct bases, but they've been they've been prime white. But everything appears to be there. So go on, Ben. What do you think this one is up for? Buy it now. I mean, they are a classic regiment. And getting all of them together with the box as well. Ooh, I am going to say £80. Pounds. Um, nope. You are... I'll give you a clue. You're way I, lower. Way, you off. way lower. Okay. Go on then. How much? How much am I out? Um, Try doubling it. 160. They are on for buy it now 149 pounds and nine pounds 95 postage. So 
Good considering experience. the state of the box and the fact that they've been primed and assembled, I think somebody's having a bit of a giraffe with that price. That is quite a lot of money. So, yeah. okay, I said 80. I am, what does that make me? 100 and how much out? 109 pounds out? No, 149 pounds by so, now. So you're 69 pounds out. 69 pounds out. Okay, so Sai has to get closer than 69 pounds out to win the first round. Let me throw up my first offering to Sai. So Sai, oh, oh, by the way, for anyone who's listening as well, we, we don't go on eBay and cheat as soon as we've um, we, we, take this quite quite we don't go searching for the items. <laughs> I have so, no idea what Ben is going to put up anyway, so... This is an interesting one for you. I've got a few pictures for this. So here's the first picture. Oh, my word. This is Doctor Who and the Cybermen. It was produced by Citadel Miniatures. So you can see on the back, there's the Citadel logo down the bottom. It was a multi-part plastic kit. It made Each one made two Cybermen and two Daleks. And I think in total, it produced, let's just see how many it says it wrapped out. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Quite a lot. It's like twenty odd Daleks and twenty Cybermen out of this. Box. So who is the box art by as well? I'm trying to just sort of get me head around the uh, the era. What we're talking like 1986, seven years or something. This like is that? the 1980s. Yeah. So I think it does it actually say in the description. I think it may have said in one of the descriptions. It's all complete on the sprue as well. It's all unclipped. Wow. The box has I... been opened, but it's all unclipped, still on the sprue. Oh my god, I, I have no 1980s, idea. 1980s, yeah. Where to even I thought I'd throw this. you a complete googly on this one. Right. One, 1980s it... <laughs> Games Workshop Citadel Doctor Who miniature game. I'd see, I don't know whether to go sub 100 or way over it. This has thrown me completely. So, what just, we got? One, just two, as three, planned. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. Ten sprues, is that? Uh, yeah, ten sprues. So like two Cybermen one, and two Daleks per screw. It's 20 Daleks and 20 Cybermen. I'm going to say um, that is up there for oh, £200. Pound. 200 Is that your guess? That's my guess, yeah. You sure? <laughs> oh, I'm doubting myself. Final answer? That. No, go on. That's the yeah, final answer. This has never happened on How Much Before. You are... Bang on the nose. Oh, get in there. Exactly. 200 pounds. That was a complete shot in the dark. I didn't know whether to say 90 or I, I tipped my hat to you on that one. That is impressive. All right. Excellent. All right, well, quid. First round to you. Yes, 200 pounds. It was quite interesting. I was looking. There was quite a few like loose miniatures, like people selling just like one Dalek or two Daleks or a Cyberman. And those seem to go for like seven or eight quid. But I suppose that's when you think about it. There's 40 of them in there. So seven times 40 is easily in excess of 200 quid. The fact that it's all... Yeah, and this is going to have show by you as a collector's item, isn't it, when you've got the Exactly. Well, yeah, that no, was a lucky guess, that. Very well done. Um, let me bring up your second one, see if I can do any better with this one. So this well, one... You, I might, think... you might have an idea with this one, because I know this is something that we've actually mentioned in the podcast before, and... Um, it is, is much but... sought after by yourself. Well, I've got one. No, I've got one of these. I've basically, I mean, it's assembled. It's not new in box or anything, but I have got one of these. It's, I've I'm never, making I'm... sure I did mark off the price then. So this no, one um, is one of Ben's favourite games. This is mm-hmm. Battlefleet Gothic. This is a Blackstone Fortress from Battlefleet Gothic. And it's brand new in the box and it's sealed as well. So it's not assembled. It's still in its box. Um, there was a couple of these on the eBay. Yeah, there was there was a couple of these. So I've picked one that sort of um, fitted in with everything else because there was one particular seller who I won't name who's oh, notorious God, for selling stuff. Don't. That's a silly, silly price. So this one is not from him or Good. her, whoever it is. That this one. is um, just one that I plucked out of eBay and compared to sold items before. So Blackstone Fortress from Battlefleet Gothic, sealed in the box. Ben, how much do you think it's worth? I mean, the fact that it's still sealed instantly pushes it up that. I've seen unsealed ones of these going for quite low. Well, I, mean, this, I was this shocked might well how low. Because you you, um, you know this item, so. I do, but I say, I've seen unsealed ones go for shockingly like 40 quid. 
But the fact that this is unassembled, still in the box, mint condition, sealed, I'm going to triple that and go 120. 120 pounds? Yeah, huh? Not bad. Go you on. are not far off indeed. It is up there for 105 pounds. Okay. Or better offer. Uh, free postage as well for anyone who's looking for a Blackstone Fortress. There you it go. is still live. It is still on there. So I am only fifteen pounds out on that one. Okay, I feel relatively good about that. Uh, let's see if I can redeem myself and make it a nil-nil draw or a one-all draw, I should say. So I you did, chose. I was going to say while you're looking for that, I did nearly pick. Uh, I found a sealed copy of Man of War, um, <laughs> still sealed in its cellophane, apparently. But we're looking at it, it looks like somebody has resealed a box in cellophane. Rather than it be, oh, and what we were just talking about, Man of War, and what do you bring up? Go on, Ben, take it away. Yeah, so I mean, as much as I chose something that was near and dear to my heart, I've picked something that I know for a fact he is a huge fan of. It's on the shelf behind him right now. This it is, is on the shelf behind me. It is right Red there. Fleet. For anyone who's watching, this is the Red Fleet. described as Warhammer Pirate game. I mean, yeah, it is. Okay, it's 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 the natural kind of successor to Man of War. This is Dreadfleet, but this is this one I have located because there were quite a few that were opened and like you know either partially assembled or unassembled, but opened. This one is new, sealed in cellophane, still mint in box. So sealed in cellophane. Ooh. Yeah. How much for, um, un- for a completely sealed, unopened box of Dreadfleet? So, if, yeah, if anyone who's um, not familiar with Dreadfleet, it was <laughs> kind of the successor to Man of War. Um, it's basically a, a standalone game on an absolutely gorgeous cloth playmat to represent yeah. the sea. Full of ships, um, rocky formations, little auxiliary ships and stuff like that. Some sea monsters sea as monster well. Sea monster tokens, yeah. But it just came out in the wrong, wrong time from Games Workshop. Um, I've actually done a really video did. ranting and raving about this while reading the Dreadfleet flavoured edition of White Dwarf. I think it was just White Dwarf 382 <laughs> off the top of my head. Um, had this come out today with mm-hmm. Warcom previews and right, previewed a reveal show or something like that, um and it was lo- after the launch you know after we've had old world yeah just come along today with walk on previews and walk on support i think it'd do really well they just sell out because as ben will attest to it is a cracking game to play they're beautiful miniatures as well they're some of the, my favorite miniatures that i've ever painted for games workshop because they are just really detailed but also really easy and fun to paint yeah really really fun to paint um fantastic looking miniatures and it's every faction pretty much is represented across the fleets and apart from probably say orcs and goblins i would say yeah i mean it's it is very much supposed to be kind of a it's supposed to be undead versus the kind of you know living races the but alliance, there is yeah. they, they throw a few kind of alternatives into the undead so you've got an undead skaven ship in there you've got like an undead chaos dwarf submersible that proved to be very submersible until the vampire raised it from the dead um yeah it, it's it is a very unique game, and it's by far one of my favourites that they produced of that era. But the question we come back to then, Sai, is how much for a still sealed, still See, minted box? I haven't looked for a while, but I have looked at these before um, to maybe doing like an unboxing video. And then I thought to myself, well, do I really want to spend all that money and not many people are going to watch it? But I know I'd have an absolute yeah. Beano unboxing it because mine's already built. I'm I'm going to go on the low side for this one because I have okay. seen them priced stupidly before. In fact, I've even seen one sealed for 700 quid at one point, which is just hilarious. But then I've seen them go for like 90 quid, 100 quid, 120 quid. Mm-hmm. Um, sealed in the box. I'm going to say 125. 125? Yeah. This one will knock your socks off a little bit. A hundred and eighty-nine pounds and ninety-nine pence. Wow! So, I'm more best so offer. Sixty-five quid away then. Yeah, I mean, basically, almost, almost as far as as I was out on the first one. Ironically, <laughs> uh, which is kind of amusing in its own right. Uh, yeah. Okay. There we go. So it is only... a draw. Do I win on a technicality then? Because I got one on the nose. 
No, I... <laughs> What is a tie break? No, it's a draw. It's a draw. It's a draw. It's a, it's 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 a. Well, I'm gonna have to go search you for Dreadfleet now. Yeah, the, the Man of War <laughs> version. Um, yeah, it, it, it's it's sealed, but it kind of looks not sealed. I'll send you the link to it later so you can have yeah, a look. Yeah, please do. Because the, the corners of the box look a bit doggy, and I thought, well, how can that be if it's still sealed? Because the cellophane looks quite loose, so I don't know well, what's happened there. My friend Michael, who I did a whole bunch of videos, we dubbed Raiders of the Lost Attic, and we went. Oh, I've seen those videos. Attic. Yeah, they're fantastic. And he's got a copy of Man of War that we dragged out of his attic. And he's probably watching this now because he's tried to catch us out a few times in the 20 questions. So at some point, I want to do a video playing through his edition of Man of War and then do a video playing through Dreadfleet and see how the two compare, see which is better. Well, I can tell you now, one's got a lot less tokens than the other. <laughs> it does, but that does, does that make it a better game or not? I, do, I don't mind a good token. A token, as long as it no. serves its purpose. Yeah, I, I don't mind. I didn't mind tokens back in like the day. Second edition 40k was notorious for cards and tokens, but I loved it. Uh, I'm going to quickly share one other picture with you guys. Uh, this is, I was just l- l- searching for this in the background while we were, well, so I was debating his odds in that there. Uh, I've mentioned before about how I love Dreadfleet as mu- almost as much as Psy does. And I'll just find it. Where did it go? Here we go. This, I, if I've got the right tab, is one of my finished Dreadfleet ships. There we go. Oh, the Sea Drake. Yeah, I love painting. This is one of my favorite ones to paint. That is beautifully painted. Thanks, dude. I'm really going to say that they are beautiful, beautiful miniatures, but they take the paint really well and because of the way in which the detail on them is sculpted you can do little things with the paint and get a really nice finish on them yeah and um, these miniatures came out before contrast paint as well so now if you to get all of these ships um on the cheap you, some of the some of them are designed for contrast paint almost mm. like the uh, the one with the elements blowing on the sails yes you know, the, the cloud giant of fire today. You just slap some contrast on that. It'd be brilliant. Like the Shade Wraith, which was the, the ghost pirate ship. Yeah. Um, I haven't got a link to it right now, but I've painted that and the Black Kraken. Uh, I think they're on my Instagram. Um, they, the Shade Wraith, you could just literally prime uh, Grey Seer and slap on some Hex Wraith flame and it would be done. It's simply a simple paint job. It could be done in 10 minutes. They yeah, I think like, I didn't. Pardon? I think I had to do mine using, uh, God, it was a few of the different shade paints that they had at the time. So it was done with like thin levels of BL tan green and like dry brushings with the kind of slightly off white gray that they had at the time, slightly blue gray. Yeah. And then so the yellow the glaze there. on the fire. Yeah. There we are. That's my one. Fantastic. Such lovely models, though. Yeah. Well, really, really I, good looking models. Luke will be entirely unsurprised that we ended up spending the time talking about old Imperial Guard regiments, Dreadfleet, and what previous issues of White Dwarf. Uh, but I think that is all the time that we have for this week. Um, Sai, do you want to tell everybody where they can find you? Yeah, so you can find me on YouTube um, at Hobby Waffle, and I also use the same username on Twitter and Instagram and at the minute, I've done a video on Space Marine 2 because that's been the talk of the term recently. There's been a, a gameplay pre, uh, playthrough video on June the 20th, so I've done a video on that, looking at some of the customization options that we're going to be seeing. There's some emblems in there for, for Carcharodons, cool. or Caradons. Um, Space Sharks are going to be in. There's loads and loads of skins. If you uh, if you watch the video and pause it, you can see some of the armor skins that we're going to see. And there's some... Um, lesser known ones in there as well so it should be quite interesting to see what we can do in terms of customization uh, yeah i'm really looking forward to that game and then as i mentioned earlier i've got some um, white dwarf retro read throughs to come up as well i'm going to record some of those at weekend hopefully um and then maybe do some painting for dreadfleet as well after just doing this podcast i've got uh got the urge to get the box off the shelf again and paint some more i think i might paint the seed drain now <laughs> Yeah, do and then share some pictures on the more Hammer Discord so we can see how it comes out. Or I might paint the um the Helden Hammer, the big flagship. Oh yeah, he's cool as well with the giant literally. So the Helden Hammer, okay, we just briefly digress. The Helden Hammer has within its rules, it's the um the flagship of the Grand Theogenist that was stolen by this Imperial Admiral to go on a quest of vengeance against this vampire pirate von Karstein. Yeah, who has kind of 
Count Noctilus, who's basically, I always think of as Count Ducula, because his yeah. castle <laughs> is literally, it's the castle from Count Ducula. It's teleported out of Sylvania and into the midst of this kind of tangle of shipwrecks. And he has the ability to like, port the castle other places, which is absolutely lifted from Count Ducula. But the Heldenhammer's figurehead is this massive brass emblem of Sigmar held up by holding the hammer, held by chains. And in the game, it's got rules for like they let the chains drop and the hammer swings down and smashes enemies. Yeah, chip. you can literally yeet another boat with the hammer, can't you? It's brilliant. Oh, such a good game. Really such a good game. Yeah, no. I think I might try that one. Do I want to paint the hull um rather than the red with the cans? Mm. I want to try and do the black and uh, yellow Nelson's flagship. Style. oh cool okay kind of yeah that. so the kind of the golden yellow that they did it was almost kind of a, an orangey cream yeah that would look really cool i'd be intrigued to see that but make sure you share pictures on the more have a discord so people can go and see oh, it there. and i'm assuming you'll share them on twitter as well yeah yeah i will but yes yeah, so that's that's my plans what about you ben what have you been up to uh so well you can find me over on my channel 90 percent geek and likewise i'm on twitter and instagram and facebook and all other kind of social places with the same handle um my plans are i'm research i've been researching hobby superstition amongst the community in terms of i don't think people have I, I noticed that i have superstitions like you know i blow on my dice like a gambler does and you know i'll switch out dice and i'll make sure that if i'm picking dice up i pick ones that show sixes on the top to try and make sure that encourage them that that's what they need to roll when i roll them but i was intrigued to know what other superstitions people had out there and in particular i've polled a selection of different members of the community from old hammer groups from age of sigma from 40k to see if there's any kind of different superstitions that are all unique to a particular style of player and i'm going to be reporting back on that later on this week mm, interesting i'm looking forward to that one yeah cool well okay that all remains for me to say that is thank you very much for watching for listening over on spotify if you're not already a subscriber please make sure you click the subscribe button give us a click in the likes let us have some comments and don't forget to come and join us on the discord so we can hassle luke post amusing pictures of things that luke has to print out and stick on his wall uh yeah and, i yeah. get to see the um the mexican poster for age of sigma which is yes just, has to be seen to be believed because <laughs> my description could not do it justice it is phenomenal. Uh, cool. Well, thank you very much, everyone. That is it. And uh, Luke would want me to say, remember, happy wargaming. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.